guys welcome back to our channel i'm going to be answering some of your frequently asked questions while i clean up our studio space brian is behind the camera the first question we had was how do you balance it all my initial response to that question is always i don't but i think that when people ask that question they're really asking how do you do what it is that you're doing and so my answer to that is always grace and it is a balance sometimes you do amazingly in one area and not so much in the other and then there's a little balancing act where you can switch over and start working on that thing that you haven't been doing so great at it is all about balancing things and giving the attention to where it is most needed at the time so like right now i have been kind of killing it in the business area but not so much in um, making sure i stay on top of the kids cleaning up their creative spaces <laughs> how long did you spend on a geography unit so um most of my units i spend around two to three months on to be honest with you i don't feel any major need to rush through a unit so i give myself lots of cushion room and lots of space to kind of be creative and take our time through it unless it's a mini unit then it may be like a week for the most part two or three months is how long i spend on a unit study what does the homeschool schedule look like for the week okay so pretty much um we kind of sort of just have a rhythm for how we do things or a routine of sorts, but we work with lots of flexibility to just give us some space to be creative and to go off on tangents whenever we need it. And we often need space for tangents. My iCal that holds our rhythm or our routine, I basically use like block scheduling and it makes it really easy for me to pick up the block and move it if I need to. Wait, I'll get it. Hold on. Our current routine goes a little something like this. We start at 8 o'clock and we do brain and logic work, devotional, our worship time, our morning walk and workout. Then we move to our morning basket, onto our block of language arts or math. Um, and I've said this many times before, we do language arts and math on a block schedule. Um, so we do language arts Monday, Wednesday, and we do math on Tuesday, Thursday. It doesn't mean that we're not doing math every single day. It just means that we focus on a specific um, area of math or language arts and then the next day we just continue to put it into practice so um, language arts or math quiet reading time and snack unit study our elective which basically our elective schedule goes a little something like this Monday is writing Tuesday is geography Wednesday is science and Thursday history after our elective is our read aloud time and then we move on to lunch um, after lunch is our homeschool planning time. We all do this together and then we are done with our school day. Now this is our shortened summer schedule and what will happen once the fall and winter rolls around and the days get a little bit shorter or longer. Do the days get longer or shorter, Brian? Okay. <laughs> once fall and winter rolls around, what I'll do is just take that same exact schedule and expand it. So instead of being done a little bit after lunchtime, we'll be done a little bit before dinner. And that is how we work out our schedule or routine. Advice for struggling readers. Any suggestions for curriculum, books, resources, etc.? How we handle reading is we just do it a lot. <laughs> we do it a lot and we feel our way through. I talk a lot more about this uh, when I discuss our book year, um, which I suggest just kind of a year full of focusing on getting in more reading time and developing in that area. But I really feel like reading time is just fun for us. There can be a negative connotation around it and the job is to eliminate that. I feel like a lot of times we cannot give them enough time and space that they need to be able to develop a love for reading themselves. Um, and I think that that starts by reading aloud to them. So when you read aloud to them, I feel like it gives them that sense of, of love, um, a love for reading. And so you need to do more of that. Um, the more reading to them and getting excited about it, I feel like the more they want to jump in. I basically just don't give them more than they can handle. And then when I do want to challenge them a bit, I let them know that this is a challenge and they like to rise to that occasion. So I feel like those are some of the things that I do to really help them increase their ability to sit and read for longer periods of time. How do you manage timekeeping with kids on schoolwork and how do you get them to stay focused? That one I feel like is a creative endeavor. <laughs> I feel like it's hard. Um, 
because there's a balance between what you want them to get done and what they're interested in working on. So I feel like for every child, it can be different. Um, it's based on their different personalities. So my oldest son, Cameron, who is 10, he's a timekeeper. He thrives off of the schedule or routine. And so I hand that over to him. Um, I basically just kind of give him a little bit of ownership by um, introducing him to the iCal and showing him the schedule. And that way, he can see the time blocks that we have allowed for him to work on specific things. I do things like add in what we call early finisher time. If they focus and they um, get through their subject specific work within a certain time frame, they are considered early finishers and they will have a little bit of free time to be able to go off and do some of the things that they have on their minds to do for the day. And then they get to do that during early finisher time up until we get ready to move on to our next subject. So he really enjoys that type of incentive. Now my younger son is totally different. He couldn't care less about the schedule overall. <laughs> However, he does enjoy a timer or an alarm. So setting a timer for him is a really fun incentive um, so that he can try to beat the clock and finish his work before the timer is done. He's probably the one that I have the most difficult time keeping focus and we do like really creative things like we'll use our little plastic animals or figurines and things and uh, we have a little giraffe that we call Gia and I'll go and put Gia over near him and tell him that Gia is watching him and helping him to stay focused. Most of the time that works sometimes it doesn't and then mommy has to come over and sit right next to him or I'll go and sit in his chair and sit him in my lap and give him a big hug his love language is touch and so I will use that during our school day and I know that he really feels um, attended to when he gets hugs and kisses so if he's having trouble focusing that is the perfect time for me to use that type of thing to my advantage so I'll go over and give him a hug and sit there while he's trying to focus and he goes from being really grumpy to smiling and really enjoying my hugs so that is one tactic that I use for him Savannah is a lot more independent so she needs space to just kind of like be free and be joyous and be herself so sometimes when she is struggling with focusing I just give her some time and space and I let her go off and do something that she wants to do and then come back um, to it when she's ready another thing that really works with her is she likes to be in video so I will pull out my phone and start to record us and when I'm recording she turns on so I feel like that's one of those things that is a little bit easier to address when you really focus in on their individual personalities and what their needs are I hope that helped <laughs>How do you teach the kids life and home skills? So this one's really easy. I let them be a part of life and home. I actually saw a post the other day. It was something to the effect of the lazy mom. She was talking about how she would post things where her kids were helping a lot in the home and she'd get a lot of comments and negative feedback from people saying that her kids were doing too much. And I thought that was really interesting because how will kids learn how to do life if you don't teach them how to do life? in real life. I feel like it is not okay to teach a child how to cook just by reading a cookbook. They learn to cook by watching you cook and by cooking. I feel like this is an ever-growing labor of love because it's my natural tendency to want to do things without them around because it's faster, you know, and it's less messy. They learn how to do life by doing it with me. Um, so I just try to carve out more time and space to incorporate them. Even things like handling and managing money, being a good steward over your time. And so I just really try to stretch myself and incorporate them more and more and make um, learning together as a family more of a priority. Do you get lonely? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Somebody asks, how do you fight loneliness? Oh my God, that question probably deserves a whole series on its own. Um, the short answer to it is absolutely I get lonely. We're trying to keep this as short and sweet as possible. I feel like it's kind of like if you're swimming and you feel a little panicked, like something is going wrong. If you fight it, it gets worse. But if you relax and feel the water around you, um, 
you, you get a moment to just breathe and figure out how to swim out of it. Um, I know that sounded really weird. Um, the more that I fight the loneliness, the, the worse it gets. Um, and I feel like I've learned the biggest lessons in the loneliness. So that is what I do. I try so hard not to fight it and just to learn the lesson there. And for the more practical side to that answer is that I choose um, activities that will help me to slow down and enjoy that restful loneliness, if that makes any sense. I clear my schedule as much as possible so that I don't have too much um, going on during that time. You know, uh, music that I love or smells that I love or things that will speak to my senses to help me just enjoy that like time of quote on quote rest and loneliness. So that's kind of like the practical side to how I handle that. Do you have any advice for making family movies? Just start filming. Like start recording using whatever you have. Uh, most people have their phones, so start recording with your phone. While you're learning how to make your movies um, better, you can always use a filter or something to make bad quality or bad lighting a little bit better. But what you're really looking for is the memory. Um, Brian and I always sit and talk about like little things that the kids said when they were younger or did when they were younger or faces they made um, when they were younger that we just wish we had caught it all. Um, and a lot of those moments come in spaces where there is bad lighting and there isn't like a proper camera to be able to capture the moment. And so those things really don't matter. You can always get better at it, but the only way you're going to get better is to just start doing it. So don't think too much about it. Just press record. I guess another thing would be is don't be afraid to get the kids involved. The kids love to be a part of grabbing the camera and recording themselves. You will want to hear their voices. Um, and you will want to see their shaky hands as they move around and film you in really bad angles. Um, those are the things that you're looking for. So I would say leave with your heart in that area and not with your head. I feel like now I'm in the age of social media, you have all of these images and all these videos that you can try and, you know, you end up comparing yourself to and it's a bit intimidating and keeps you from starting. But at the end of the day, uh, the way it looks doesn't even matter. What you really want is the memory and the story that it will tell. So in order to get that, you just have to start. And all of those things, those other things, will kind of come along the way. Yeah, those would be my smallest pieces of advice when it comes to making family movies. Someone wants to know if you're ever going to make your own curriculum. <laughs> I'm going to say the soft answer to that is no. I mean, there's a chance. Um, Guide for creative, uh, creating a vision for your homeschool. Do you have ooh. any thoughts on that? Um, that's a really good question. You guys came with all the good questions this time around. So I actually had a little bit of this conversation with one of my friends. I would say for now, I don't think you have to complicate it too much. I think that everybody has a vision for their family. I think it just boils down to you carving out a little bit of time on a consistent basis where you can just sit and think and dream about what you would want for your family. And it's really not about what you want, but I believe that God has given you specific desires in your heart um, for your purpose. And it's just a matter of you carving out the time to write those things down. And I think it doesn't have to be so intimidating. Just carve out maybe 20 minutes a week for you to sit down and just write some things out. Um, over time, it will start to become more and more clear. You just have to give it some of your attention. Do you have a cleaning routine? Okay, so short answer to that is yes, I have a cleaning routine. The better question that you want to ask is, do I use it all the time? <laughs> I feel like I have all these systems in place um, and they're very important, but the discipline is just trying to use them and sometimes you use them and sometimes you don't. So I do actually have a routine but we don't always use it, and the goal is to implement it and get better at it as we go along. So, we're working on it. What apps are you currently using? 
So I'm going to be doing a slightly more extensive version of what is on our iPad on our Patreon fan space. Um, but in general, we're using a lot of the built-in apps from the iPad, a lot of things like the Pages apps and the Numbers apps, and a lot of things that are free and already included or things that we've had um, before. To me, it's all about not how many resources I have, but using the ones that I have and just trying to find creative new ways to use those things. So, Favorite self-care? Um, self-care. Self-care is an interesting topic for me, and it's actually something that we're always touching on over on my patron fam space and some of my patrons have the absolute best advice for um, incorporating more self-care into our days but for me self-care is a lot about incorporating more of the things that I enjoy so I'm an artist at heart so the filming portion and the painting portion and the journaling portion those things are self-care for me um, when I'm doing things that help me to grow um, as well or alongside of the kids and and their interests and gifts those things really build me up so I consider those things self-care how do you map out interests led learning and like what are some resources that you would suggest that is a hard question for me to answer um, because it's not one of those straightforward things um, I have a very creative brain that kind of is jumpy and all over the place I feel like I walk my way through that with my patron fam and a lot of like our planning sessions and things so it's one of those things that I can show you better than I can tell you and it's not straightforward for me because it's something I pour my whole heart into um, paying attention to my kids and their interest it's a really customized heart-led um, experience for me so it's just not the easiest thing for me to answer um, in this way but I do have quite a bit of planning videos on my patron face if you were interested in uh, getting more into depth and detail with how I do things. So how do you find a rhythm? So with their schedule, with your goals, with timing, how did you, how do you, how do you find your rhythm? A lot of trial and error. You try things, you find out what works, you keep what works, you throw out what doesn't work, you try something new. You just need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable a lot of the times. It's not like you ever get to master one stage of homeschool because you're schooling different kids at different ages and different stages and you just need to be comfortable um, being flexible and with things evolving. What curriculum uh, are you using and when did you officially start homeschooling? Okay, so we build our own curriculum and we use different pieces of curriculum or resources all as resources to help us accomplish whatever our goal is. Second part of that question is always one of those things that makes me smile because I'm a firm believer in uh, the fact that I have been teaching them since the day that they were born. So I don't believe that homeschooling, quote unquote, starts when the children become of school age. I feel like they are learning so much. Um, all the way up until the time that is considered school age. But um, if you're asking for officially, which I think she was, I guess whenever they're considered school age is when I started. Now in the state that I am in, they don't require any um, particular notice that you or intent of homeschool, I guess unless you pull them out of school and then intend to homeschool them. So I really didn't have to submit anything. I did draw up a letter of intent and I keep it for my records, but that's just the way it goes where I am. Where do you see your family in five years? Oh, you guys are killing it with these questions. <laughs> oh man. Basically, you've gotten a lot of previews to what I envision for our family. I just really do believe that life is full of so many lessons and so that is the heart position that I want to always be in and that I want for my family, each member of my family to be in. I just want to wake up every day with a teachable spirit that says there are so many lessons for us to learn in the ups and the downs in relating to one another, in learning about nature, in learning about creativity and purpose. That is pretty much what I envision for our family. 
we want to travel and experience a full life um, where we are taking full advantage of our gift to serve and our gift of being in relationship with one another. I guess you guys will be along for the journey um, to see how everything unfolds. I've also pretty much spoken to this in our film on how to start. So I'm excited for all the adventures that are ahead and girl, that was a really good question. <laughs> so I'd like to throw that back to you. Whatever you guys are comfortable sharing, I would like to invite you to start um, verbalizing what your vision is or where you see your family in five years. Thank you guys so much for asking so many wonderful questions and we will see you in the next Falco family film.